the uh, mother superior says to all the nuns, there's a case of uh, gonorrhea opened up in the convent. And then the nun in the back says, well, that's good because I'm sick of that Zinfandel. You could just say, if, if I offended you, I didn't mean to. Right. Uh, the rabbi goes into the shul and says, you know, there's a case of gonorrhea open up in the, in the synagogue. And then the rabbi goes, well, it's better than that man of Shevitz. I'm sick of that. Better than Morgan David. Where were you born? I was born in a place called Los Angeles, which is above San Diego. Right. Below San Francisco. Uh -huh. My parents are from New York. They left to be closer to the Dodgers. So you, you're in L.A.? Well, yeah, I was born in L.A. We lived with my grandmother, who was a radical. Like uh, she, Emma Goldman, you mean, kind of radical? She was kind of like Emma Goldman. She, the, my family absorbed lesbians during the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> well, it was, lesbians it was, during the Cuban Missile Crisis? Well, I mean, all those radical people came out of Cuba, um, the gays first. Oh, they had to escape, right. And they escaped, and my grandmother was this kind of um, lefty. So She I, fled Cuba? No, 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 they just had this house in Echo Park that was oh. just this place where these, I remember lesbians coming and doing the marenga with my mother dancing around. And, but, you, but your dad's kind of conservative, isn't he? My father is very conservative. How did that play? It didn't go well. Ah. It didn't go well because he, he accuses me of only remembering the lesbians and not the leather coats. <laughs> Why don't you remember the leather what coat and the skiing? <laughs> what about that gold chain I got you? Why do you remember Irene? Did you go to like convent or straight high school? And by straight, I mean like a public school? Or did you go to yeah, I went school? to a very, very fine school in La Cunada. It was a public school, but it was a rich man's public school where everybody was called Otsi and Bitsy. Right. One day they came to the class and they said, we're having an emergency field trip. And I went, really? <laughs> well, I mean, what about insurance forms from mother and father? I mean, this is precious mm. cargo. That's, I'm not going to any. That's funny. And they said, in the end, you'll be, your parents will be very happy you went. I said, I still, I want insurance papers on this. We didn't know where we were what, going. Yeah, what grade were you in? Do you remember? I was in the eighth grade. Okay, go ahead. And uh, it was in 1972. And uh, we went down Benedict Canyon and ended up at the Century Plaza Hotel. Right and we were brought into the parking lot, and there was Nixon. You met Richard Nixon? It was a photo opportunity for re-elect the president. Oh, so they used you as a they prop used, they for used Nixon. They used me. So you and, could, yeah. Youngsters, what did, what did he say? I'm he had a fraud. very kind face. And Nixon was very nice to me. He was very warm, and he said, uh, what is it, um, what's your hobbies? What are your hobbies? Yeah, and I told, well, I said, I, I make beautiful macaroni lamps. I, 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 <laughs> I glue the macaroni on. I use different types of gold. And it was so boring that I think that's where the missing 18 minutes are. It was after I told him about the macaroni lamps, he was like, okay, I got to go. I got to go. Let's get on. Pat's waiting for me with her seal coat. <laughs> right. A good Republican coat. But I mean, by, by, by coming away from like the, the, those conservative people, because my father was the, the mayor of a very conservative town, we had dinner with Benjamin Netanyahu once, and he, he, he was scary. Very Well, you've got to be scary to be the Prime Minister of Israel. How does that define who you are? If you grew up in this atmosphere, on one side was kind of radical, on the other side was repressive. So how did your personality form in that milieu? To be honest, I, and I know this causes problems, but my, I was kicked out. At what age? 16. Because? I was hanging around people that looked like spiders from Mars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My father was very conservative, and he couldn't really take the, uh, you know, the, the eyeliner on the bottom uh -huh. and then the, 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 the spandex. Did you feel rejected or liberated? Kind of like the opening credits of that girl. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first thing that you did by yourself on a stage? I don't remember. I improvised Vaguely. something. Give me Vaguely, a big I probably was talked. Was it stand up? You talked. I talked you about. Sang? I think I talked about being like an Indian, like I was a Shumashu Indian. What did you do? When was I it? became a go-go boy at the whiskey, and I was illegal. <laughs> I was illegal because I was only 17, and he had to be 21 in the whiskey. So in between shows, I had to wait in the car. I've seen your early stand up, and I remember people going around doing your lines. Yeah. I only heard you once. I remember Dave Thomas was obsessed with Herrera. Yes. That became an iconic Every day, bit. every day, someone Tell, brings up Herrera. I'll do the exact bit. I didn't punch it. I'm a punk terrorist. Sometimes I like to go to carpet stores, and I get really stoned, and I go, hi, um, I want carpet, but I don't know the square footage. <laughs> and then the uh, I Iranian Syrian or the guy from the Ghanaian army will say, um, 
You don't want carpet, you want an errand. <laughs> I'm going, no, I don't want an errand. I want carpet nailed to the floor. He goes, you don't have the square footage. And that's kind of, I think I was yeah. just, you want an owl. I look like a tiny uh, baby uh, owl, like, you know what? It was the first Taliban humor. <laughs> You you would do characters. And I you would, would do tell character, story. You but they do, were you characters. Don't do jokes. As a reviewer, I'd have a hard time conveying to the reader how complex and beautiful and poetic and amazing your your one man shows are. Thank you. Because they cover such a wide area and they and they reveal there's so many surprises in your show and people don't expect an artist to talk about the things you talk about. The way you talk about the one-man show that you did it was at the Barrow Street. Theater? Yeah, the Barrow Street that Theater. That was an amazing. Thank you. You know what it was? Was that um, what when, drives that? I mean, well, when, it's like when people, you write Richard, those. It's like people like you. I really looked up to you at the beginning of my career because you dared to show that darkness, which to me is fascinating. Even being in this room, the Friars Club, this is like the grassy knoll of comedy. <laughs> you know, it's like, w w what happened here? What did we see here? Mm -hmm. who, who got assassinated here? Who got laid here? What secrets are here? Those dark secrets are where the, um, the mana is and the gold. Mm -hmm. And you can get it in music, you can get it in art, but you know, it's like when you go up there, when you were doing the stuff at the beginning, when I saw you at Catch a Rising Star, I thought, and you know, I was nobody. It was Sandra Bernhardt and I, and Sandra mm -hmm. was in The King of Comedy. And I just watched, and I realized, God, could I ever do that? And I realized I could if I went there, if I took away the ashes from the fire and examined what had been burned. Mm -hmm. It's like the great people who can make you cry and laugh at the same yeah, time. Yeah, well, you, yeah, absolutely. And that's an accident when, when, you know, when you really, really go there. And that's why now it's such an exciting time to. To, to be funny. It's correlated to painting because when you have a blank canvas in front of you, that first stroke, that first color you choose, that first whatever size brush it is, determines the rest of the painting as a character will determine the rest of a monologue. Well, the, 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 the drawing, it's the horizon line. Where, where, do, where does it rest? You know, I have so many drawings of you and it's always where you're always reading. <laughs> and all the pictures that I've drawn, you're always reading. And I've always, I remember that my best drawing that I did of you is, um, you're reading and it said, um, crocodile eats woman, all sad. <laughs> and that was the headline of the, of the World well, Tribune that Well, it's another thing about your painting that I find incredibly unique and witty. Uh, and in and, and some of your paintings, there'll be a menu or there'll be a sign or there'll be an expression or a quote. Yes, because everything in the phantasmagorical world will conspire with the artist to create whatever it is that you're going to get from it. And you can do that in stand-up. You can do it in being funny. Let's just go, jump around here a little bit. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That was my first, well, my first movie was the main event with Barbra Streisand. My second, was what? The main event with Barbra Streisand. And Ryan? Ryan O'Neill. little guy. was a remake of some other movie. I, it was a boxing movie. But, I, but that was my first kind of featured thing. And then Fast Times, Amy Heckerling wrote it. And, right. she, and she asked me to deliver the pizza right, to Sean right. Penn. So it was more like um, a favor. I, like, I didn't think anything would ever happen from that. I just did it as a, they said I'm the first generation Xer in a movie because I was overqualified oh, that's and too funny. old for my job. Oh, that's but funny. Sean Penn, you know, he, you, you look at him and you think, um, he embodied that character that I thought he was an extra. I thought, this guy is a troublemaker, Amy. You gotta get him off the set. <laughs> that's Spicoli. <laughs> that's how real he was. He was very, very what real. What are some of the other movies? You, you played a villain in a Bruce Willis movie? I was in The Last Boy Scout right? with Bruce Willis. and he, You were scary uh, in that. I was very scary. You had that thing where you gave the guy the shock. And yeah, I had the taser, and then right. I had the gun, and then um, I was a nat I re we realized I was a natural marksman, that I could pick up the gun and go, where do you want it? Ooh. Oh, you want it there? It was really, really I'm cool. Getting wet. And then, <laughs> then the guy comes up to me and he goes, are you, um, are you an actor or are you a stuntman? And I, I Ooh, said, whoa. What a compliment. What, what do you, what do you what, want what me to be? What gets paid more? <laughs> yeah, who gets paid more? <laughs> um, that movie was interesting because it was uh, Tony Scott and uh, 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 Belzer and what's his name, Bruce Willis, Bruce. who's only like you know four foot. And seven. wasn't Damon in it? And Damon Wayans. What was it? you did a movie? In, I remember you had to go to New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, I did that movie. Yes, with uh, Mr. Ozzie Davis, the great Ozzie Davis and Peter Falk. 
Mm -hmm. The whole experience is about doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you come away with something that is hopefully interesting. Fame is not, or, and, and the business, as you know, is not what it was. No. And we've already had, at least I have, you have, you're a big star. You did, uh, you were an, a kind of iconic, you were a Manny for the Olsen Twins. Yes. What was the name of that show, Waverly? It was called uh, So Little Time. So Little Time. I remember you being recognized worldwide, yeah. and you only did, like, what, nine of those? Or we like did, a, I, or I think we did 19 of them. One season or whatever. And I, I, well, Tell us about that character and why you decided to do it. I had been so, did so many violent movies and kind of sex movies and porno movies, I thought... No, you never did porno. I did a movie called The Fluffer. No, that's not a, technically a porno movie. Anyway, go ahead. And I thought it would be great to give something back to the kids. <laughs> after you I mean, I really did. After you washed your hands. After I took the lube yeah, off the I'm, lens. I'm hip. They were just emerging as an international phenomenon. They were very, show. very haunting. They were kind of like the, the, like the twins in The Shining. Mm -hmm. They had a very mystical... They loved you, though. They loved me because I was like them. You were a, Sp a Hispanic? I was a Hispanic... Gay. Nanny. Nanny. I had, you see, I have everything in common with them because I was a child actor. So I knew that a lot of times I could say, I, why do we have to be here? And they would hug the, me. Because a kid would say that. Yeah. I'd what go. was the thing you did as a child? Yeah, I was a, a model. And I was... For uh, women's basketball uniforms? No, no I was a kid. cartoon model for ABC. <laughs> Hanna-Barbera would use you as a model and they... I, was, they would, I would go there and I would, um, you know, uh, pose and... In costumes? in my own clothes, right. and then they turned me into Devlin. I played the brother of Devlin, which was a cartoon series based on Evil Knievel. And Mickey Dolenz did my voice. And I was on lunch pails, bedspreads, drapes. Bedspreads? Thir bedspreads. Ah. I know, they're really beautiful. <laughs> Are you doing another one-man show, I hope? I'm writing a play right now about Jacqueline Onassis. What is your fascination with her? You got the, we recently, all of us, got these tapes where mm -hmm. Schlesinger interviewed her. Mm -hmm. And give us a little uh, example of her on these tapes, and then we'll talk about your obsession, as I am obsessed with it. It isn't too much the obsession, it's about... Class, right? It's and about class. And I, and I feel like I connect with her in the sense that I'm from also the backwater of the Victorian era, growing up in Pasadena, and my family is kind of well healed right. so education was kind of important mm -hmm. and you know people who read and have a larger scope to draw from well she said you know you know, you know w w when jack was writing profiles in courage i was you know, translating all of mao si tung she actually from the french translated a lot Mao's, of, uh, of the doctrines of 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 indonesia and of vietnam and, you know before when vietnam was won um and, and such an integral part of b bringing genuine taste and excellence to this country. Mm -hmm. But Jack, she, yeah. Jack Kennedy was a guy that, um, into insight into our president, who you love so much. And I remember you, you know, you, you see, I, give, give us some of the things that she said about him and, and to show the, well, the, she would the say, class distinction. The, like she came from this world. She says, um, you know, I don't want anyone to think that Jack was in pain. But he, he, he was in awful pain. He never knew when the spasms were going to come. And it was, you know, we were out there campaigning, you know, having a milkshake and a hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> having a milkshake and a hot dog. You know, it was just awful. You know, all, all of those senators, they were all, you know, corny characters. You know, the kind of guys that would yell out, you know, on, on the 4th of July. <laughs> she says, what does she say? She says... It's uh, almost like she's from the 15th century. Yeah, she says... Um, and it was, you know, Mrs. Kennedy was always, you know, if somebody came over for dinner, she'd say, well, are they Catholic? Like, that would make them nicer. <laughs> now, uh, I think we've talked about this before, but I'm now going to be more insistent that your next one-man show is Taylor Negron is Jackie Kennedy. I could see you doing that. You know what we could do because it's of my history. beard? I could play Jackie in the first act and then Lincoln in the second. When I was a kid, my aunt lived next door to James Bacon. He was a Hearst journalist. I was 13, and he wrote about me in his column. In it, I said, you know, I really, really enjoyed Mae West. And he was like, you enjoy Mae West? How old are you? 13. I was like, it makes sense to me, that world. She's the only female, female impersonator. 
She called me. May called you. May West called me. So Senate, she saw the bacon piece? Yeah, she saw the, that's mm -hmm. when press mattered. And May West called me, and we spoke on the phone. And, uh, you know, she just said, you know, I told her I wanted to be in show business, and she goes, you know, well, pay attention to the box office and, you know, be yourself. You got to be yourself. I mean, it was, she was like, oh, mm, but she was very direct. <laughs> uh-huh. It was sweet of her to call you. Very, very sweet. And when I was on The Tonight Show, in those days, you remember, it would yeah, say, more was, to come? Yeah. They showed a cartoon of Mae West, and under it, it oh, said, more to come. By coincidence. Yeah. So I always felt that there was like this, connection. like this connection and this guide, you know, about like performing for the, you know, the, for all the people. <laughs>